Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Michael KE4EST. Well, back here again with this little BK Precision Scope, and I've got it going. Um, first, we'll go over. I just had it on, so I got to be careful where I stick fingers and all that. I don't know how good capacitors are discharging or whatever. But anyway, not a whole lot I mean to look at. I still got to uh, do something better with this mess here. I've got that hooked in there. I've got the you know, these panel mount connectors, 2.1 millimeter, like this here is. And I have looked, and I've looked, and I've even put on some recent projects, well, I mean, a few months ago, where I used the same thing, and they have went AWOL, so... I've got more of those on order, so I'm going to so fix that up and fix all this over here mess. But, so I'm still using this little uh, temporary thing I've got on there. But anyway, I mean, what I did pretty much is went through and I pulled the power supply board out. I've got it back in there now. And I went through and changed out every one of the capacitors in there. Scattered here somewhere. I've got Got them all over the place over here still on the, behind the bench here or on the back of the bench here and I went through and I was uh, Testing these things and you know as I pulled them out Because I thought well, I don't really want to do I need it really need to go through and recap the whole thing So there was only 10 or was it 10 or 11 electrolytics on the power supply boards. So I thought, well, I'm going to go through and I'll replace those. And as I replace them, I'll take them out and test them. And they all tested good. So I thought, well, if they all test good, I'll just leave the rest of it alone. And if one of the, you know, capacitors goes out on one of the other boards, it's not as deadly if one, you know, especially when these high voltage caps goes out or something on the power supply. So since all those tested pretty good, I went ahead and replaced them anyway. I put brand new ones in every one of them and up the voltage a little bit. Like if it was like a couple of these was 25 volt, I put 50 volt in its place. The same exact capacitance value. And they were some that was 160 volt and 200 volt. And I went 250 or 300 volt on those. So I upped the voltage on everything, beefed it up a little bit. And I changed out that resistor I was talking about. Yeah, I guess you can see that. Yeah, it's just right down in there. You can see it right down in here. And I looked at the schematic. I got a schematic I found on it online. I found a user manual on a schematic. I didn't find a service manual, but I did find that. And that resistor coming off of the, uh, it's coming off this transformer. You know, straight into that for your high voltage boost. So, you know, to give the high voltage here to the CRT. So... It's not, you know, it was fine. It, you know, it looked fine. I just don't know why it's getting warm. But I replaced it. And even when I pulled it out, it was all black around it. It's supposed to be 22K. It tested dead on 22K. And it's not even a high precision resistor. But So I replaced it with a half watt 22K. And like I said, did that. And then I went through and, you know, and then I went, you know, like I said, replaced the capacitors. I thought, okay, let's fire it up. Now. Well, before I fired it up, I went through with every one of these potentiometers and all the connectors in here and all the anything, you know, like uh, over here. Had to get down in there to you can hear that, you know, to change these with time bases down here. All that over here and your voltage range and everything. Get in there and I cleaned all that out with contact cleaner. Got that all good, and I thought, okay, let's plug it up and fire it up. Hang on, I first fired it up, it didn't fire up. It didn't do nothing. I was like, uh, what? And so I pulled the, pulled the 12 volts from it real quick. And got to looking around, I noticed this fuse. Back in here, head shot. This top one, if you can see that. Well, they got wires in the way, don't we, here? But 
you can see that the fuse will see it's not the right size fuse that goes in there. Um, this one is 32 volt fuses, and you know, and the one and a quarter little shorties. Um, so I replaced I didn't have one of these, so I replaced it with the it has to be a two amp fuse, and I had some, they were 10 amp and 5 amp, so. But I had one of these little five millimeter fuses, so I stuck it in there just temporarily until I get some proper fuse to go back in here. So I noticed that fuse was shot. And I was like, hmm, okay, now why did that fuse shoot? Went through real quick. I was going to go through and make sure I put all the electrolytics back in. I had everything marked. I even had a, um, yeah, it's right over here. Can't really see much on it, but. You can see I've went through and so where the connectors are, where different things are on the board and where all the capacitors are and I'd mark them off as I'd put them in. You can see where I put plus and minus or plus and minus or sometimes just a plus sign or like there I just put a minus sign. And these are the last three. Oh, you can see that can you? The last three I changed out here so I didn't even mark those. That it, that's what the yellow is, you know, it's been replaced. So I went through that and I was like, well, maybe it, did I get one in backwards? And, but as I was doing that, one of the wires I didn't hook back up. Going from the, I uh, forget which board it was here, but I forget which one of these boards it was, but it was a wire. So I put that back in, soldered it back in, and replaced that fuse and crossed my fingers and turned it on and it came alive. Um... And the trace is actually there and all that. So let's set that up and show you here. Um, be careful with stick fingers and whatever. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run this off 12 volt supply all the time instead of putting in a transformer or something or try to put in a power supply so that I can plug it in the wall since I've got... I've got three 13.8 volt supplies that run 24 hours a day here around the workbench. One on the, there's one here, there's one down below here, and there's one over here on the other workbench behind the camera where the computer's set up and stuff. So, I mean, more radios and all that. So, I'm just going to feed it off of one of them. It don't draw 750 mils. Um, and then at the most, I was getting a little over an amp. So, it ain't nothing to worry about so that's what I'll do on that um, somebody was asking me that and I'm just gonna run it 12 volts or 13.8 volts whatever you want to call it but full time turn this on yep. a little more this way get this light up out of the way you can see we have a red light we have trace so and let's see which one of these. Nope, not that one. Let's run a signal into it. And there she is. I mean, just, I don't know what else to show you more about it, but it's working. Um, you can see it in DC mode, it kicks it up above the line. AC is about centered, it ain't perfectly centered right now. But it focused and everything works really good. Really get it sharpened out. So, I went through that and in the book also it um, showed a basic alignment, not the full alignment, just power supply alignment. So I went through and on a couple of checkpoints where it said put a meter and check this and then I put a frequency counter in the uh, on the switching supply side, and it's supposed to be 20 kilohertz, and it was, I think, around 19 or 18.8 or something. So I brought that back to 20 kilohertz, and that's all I done to it. And I mean, I turned it on, it was just like that, it's like bam, you know. So I was like, aha. So I mean, I'd say for the most part, cleaning those dirty contacts where it's been setting or been used for years and been setting and setting, the guy said it's set for years. It's probably the main thing that brought it back to life. Um, but I like to, especially with high voltage stuff, I like to just 
replace those you know capacitors so anyway I did that but it probably would have worked if I just cleaned it up um, so let's real quick I'll show you I went ahead and got my uh, curve tracer sitting over here the one I made sitting over here this is a this one particular one here is a Carlson design but you can you know find them on the internet and whatever but of course I highly recommend you know if get the one that Mr. Carlson's got um, if you're not a patron go sign up over there and of course I'm not trying to sponsor him or anything but he's got some stuff that'll blow your mind over there um, but this is a pretty more advanced slow circuit but still a basic curve tracer but it's better than some of these other little plain ones you know with just a few handful of parts you see online let me hook this up and See it's working. Get the probes here. Try to get this centered up. Whoop, I want. You see that there? Look at this. That's just me putting my fingers across the probes. I think I got a little capacitance in me, don't you? I'm sure everybody's familiar with the curve tracer. If you're not, it's you know you can go through and check components out real quick. Like I can take and take a capacitor and stick across it. And well, I've got it set a little bit too big right here. Um, there you go. Set the capacitor across it. You can check it and. You know, that's what it should look like. But the biggest advantage of these things, you know, is you got a, uh, I don't know if I can get both of these in the shot like I want, but so I've got a board here. And you see these row of transistors here. Yeah, well, I'm just going to try to kind of do it. I'll just bring it over here and do it like this. Because it's just a real quick thing. I'm not going over anything about curve tracers really but I just knew when I was talking about curve tracers somebody probably wants to see it so I mean it's working pretty good as a curve tracer um but you can see that right there I got different uh, how much current I'm limiting going through that part but and this board ain't plugged in or nothing of course and we'll go to the next one I'll go to the next one next one Next one, see there, I mean, we're looking pretty good here, and that's what, the, you know, once you do your basic troubleshooting skills, of course, and your common sense, you know, you've been, you learn to do it, and you get it down to, well, I think it's in this area of the circuit, or this board, you know, if you got some that you're working on, this section of the board, you know, this here is doing this, and this is doing this, but this part ain't working right, so it's got to be, you know, X, Y, or Z part of the board, so you get in that part of the board, and then you can take this here, no schematic, no whatever, just run through. And look at that. That's a. And then we go to the next transistor. Oh, on no, the transistor. Look at that. Same transistor, same circuit. See that? Well, that one's a little different. So if you check and look and say, well, let's see. Um, yep, same transistor. And you try to, you know, get back and you're trying to, you know, do the best you can with it. No schematic. Well, that looks about the same type of circuit it's running through. You know, that might be it. But that's not too bad, but it's a little bit different. But, you know, that's how you start troubleshooting with these. And let's see. Let me grab the Zener diode. That's what everybody likes to see. 5.6 volt Zener diode. And we are 
That's probably going to be too much. One volt per division here. I'll stay in there. If I bring it down and you can see I'm coming up. This is, it's off a little bit off the graticule here, but you can see that right before a volt, we're starting to get that, you know, the diodes turned on. If we keep going, there it is right there. One, two, three, four. Yeah, see, so this needs to come on over. If we brought this over, it would be off the be off the screen if we bring this over here now I'm at 2 volts per division and just a little past 4 volts there and this ain't, like I said this ain't perfect but as you can see as I run the voltage up, yeah, that's doing what it's supposed to. And if I flip it around, see it's going the other way. Of course, you have to adjust sometimes and get this where you want it. But and that's a high current. If I go to low current, you can see more capacitance there. Okay, there is a little capacitance in every part, you know, and that helps you out sometimes when you've got. And really it's kind of like zooming into the part even more and you go through and say you know well I'm really close and I can't quite put my finger on it it's got to be right in one of these you know say one of these diodes or one of the you know whatever part you're working on or this transistor you can go back and forth between a couple of them you know and say what's well, got to be this one because look at the signature that's what that's showing a signature on the screen you look at one and you look at the other the signature is different you may not see it as much when you're up here in the uh, higher current setting but lower current you can really see that and then you try you know another one and then another one and you might get one that's really goofy or something or you put one in it looks like this but you didn't change anything well that's obviously different something's anyway you got to watch too sometimes it could be something else in the circuit you know um, but if you put it right across the component, usually it's not going to, it'll show you that. So that's what's really nice about those, and they really help you troubleshoot your circuits there. But anyway, I've done enough rattling on here. But, um, that's it, it's working. And I'm just varying the voltage here on the curve tracer to do that. But So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions about it or anything like that be sure to let me know and shoot them down there uh, in the comments below next I've got a couple other things I'm trying to debate on which one I want to do next but until the next video this is Michael KE4EST 73